Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell the truth about silver. Today is Sunday the 26th of April 2020 and yesterday we published our Gold and Silver Weekly Update for the week ending the 24th of April. Now if you haven't had an opportunity to listen to that video we've placed a link in the description box below. But in it we highlighted that this week we are to expect a considerable amount of US economic news from Tuesday onwards, with special attention to be given to the FOMC meeting and Jerome Powell's comments after it on Wednesday. Well, whilst the Fed will indeed be the catalyst for world price movements and really the fulcrum of analyst forecasts and predictions, there are other banks also making public announcements this week, including the Bank of Japan and the European Central Bank, which, combined with the Fed between them, represents almost half of global output. Now that said, in addition to these three banks, there are also rate decisions scheduled in Kazakhstan, Hungary, Sweden, Georgia, Kenya, Botswana, Dominican Republic, Colombia and Guatemala. Also to be announced this week, Apart from the economic data we've already highlighted in our yesterday's update, we have the first quarter GDP data for the US, but also for the Euro area, for France, for Spain, for Italy, for Mexico, for Taiwan, for Belgium, for Austria, for Latvia and Lithuania. And not forgetting PMI reports for China. So for geeks like us, a truly fascinating week. Now getting back to central banks. Tomorrow is an important day for the Bank of Japan. Let's listen just to a brief Bloomberg article on what is happening there. Bloomberg article dated 25th of April 2020. Bank of Japan. After stepping up its buying of exchange traded funds and corporate bonds, the Bank of Japan will on Monday discuss allowing unlimited government bond purchases, replacing their current 80 trillion yen target, the Nikkei reported on Thursday. Governor Haruhiko Kuroda and fellow policymakers will likely take further steps to get credit to businesses, according to a Bloomberg survey of economists. Most analysts see the Bank of Japan ramping up support of financing for companies. Some 83% of, of 40 analysts forecast the BOJ will introduce new tools to support bank lending for businesses at a meeting now shortened to one day. Options include increasing purchase targets for commercial paper and corporate bonds, or widening a new lending operation so smaller firms can benefit via smaller banks. End of article. As already mentioned, Wednesday is Fed FOMC Day. And let's listen to a Bloomberg article on that subject. Bloomberg article dated 25th of April 2020. Title, World's Biggest Central Banks Meet as Pressure Mounts to Do More. Global central banks remain under pressure to do more to support their economies through the recession, even after driving interest rates to record lows and pledging to spend trillions of dollars on asset purchases. The US Federal Reserve, Bank of Japan and European Central Bank, which together cover almost half of global output, will all convene meetings of policy makers this week with governments this week set to confirm multi-year expansions ended in the United States and Euro area in the first quarter, monetary policymakers may have to do more to limit the recession and speed the recovery. Among the options, extending the quantitative easing, helping ease credit to troubled businesses, and committing to rock-bottom rates for longer. The April 28th 29th policy meeting will be the first scheduled gathering since January, but officials have met multiple times since then. They have cut rates to virtually zero and rolled out a series of emergency 
and unorthodox lending facilities designed to backstop markets and keep credit flowing to businesses. The Fed's balance sheet has already reached $6.57 trillion. Economists in a Bloomberg survey have limited expectations for any substantial changes at this week's meeting. Large majorities, 90% and 87%, said they didn't expect policymakers to offer any additional guidance on how long they intend to keep rates near zero or on the future pace of large-scale asset purchases. But investors will be looking for any indications from Chairman Jerome Powell on how deep the Fed fears the recession will go and its outlook for recovery. The central bankers are also still being lobbied to do more as they try to get their Main Street lending programme up and running. There are calls from some lawmakers to allow more cities and small counties to borrow from it. End of article. Finally, Thursday is European Central Bank Day, and this is what Bloomberg has to say about that. Bloomberg article dated 25th of April 2020. European Central Bank. The European Central Bank sets policy on Thursday with a heavy weight on its shoulders as governments argue over joint fiscal action. After President Christine Lagarde told leaders last week that they may have done too little too late, and warning that the euro area economy could shrink as much as 15% this year, they still failed to agree on how to restructure a recovery fund. Economists see the European Central Bank boosting emergency bond buying later this year, most economists expect the central bank will keep monetary policy on hold this week. It only recently pledged to bump up its asset purchases by more than a trillion euros this year and made it easier for banks to finance their loans to companies. But one in four respondents to a Bloomberg survey said the ECB could still boost the size of its purchase programme from 750 billion euros, that's 812 billion dollars, as early as Thursday. Most see it happening by September. Having agreed last week to accept junk bonds as collateral for bank loans, there is also speculation it will add sub-investment grade assets to its purchase plan list. End of article. With all of these announcements due, with expectations being towards either maintaining what has already been announced or even further relaxing of monetary policies and increasing of QE measures, one has to ask, is it unrealistic to expect gold prices to rise even further than the $44 advance it made last week? We suggest not. That is not unrealistic. Of course, if there is further relaxation, it will suggest that the world's economies are in an even worse shape than many originally envisaged or forecast. Now, an additional side effect of what is going on within the banking community can be seen from an article published by Reuters today. We shall read a little of it for you. Reuters article, Wall Street curtails corporate lending in Europe to put America first. U.S. investment banks are shrinking lending activity in Europe as they're forced to retreat home, allowing BNP Paribas and other European lenders to fill the funding gaps and grab market share, seven sources told Reuters. Facing unprecedented demand for loans and under pressure to support their local economy, the likes of Bank of America and J.P. Morgan have taken a more cautious approach on Europe, the sources said, speaking on condition of anonymity. Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley and Citigroup have also become more risk-averse in taking lending decisions in Europe as they fret over a wave of potential loan defaults, the sources added. With US banks focusing on their home turf, France's BNP Paribas is using its robust balance sheet to gain market share 
by increasing lending across the continent, according to the sources at Refinitiv Data. Bank of America, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, Citigroup and BNP Paribas all declined to comment. The US banks remain active on selective deals, however, with Goldman Sachs and Citigroup underwriting a 3.5 billion euro credit facility for Fiat Chrysler in March. They are also deploying different financing tools, such as issuing bonds, as well as providing bridge capital or bilateral loans to spread their bets in Europe. Sources at the bank say that their European rivals can afford to be more aggressive in their capital allocation, as they can access ultra-cheap financing from the European Central Bank. The retreat of Wall Street's giants nonetheless follows a lending bonanza of several years, with US lenders consistently dominating European investment banking league tables since the financial crisis in 2008, Refinitiv data shows. Quote, US banks are right now more concerned with their domestic, commercial and retail banking activities, so they're taking a more careful approach to Europe, unquote, said Society General Germany country head Guido Zerler. Bank of America, for example, turned down requests by British events organiser Informa in March to underwrite a new £750 million credit line, according to one source with direct knowledge of the matter, despite being its joint corporate broker. BNP Paribas, HSBC and Spain's Bank of Santander decided instead to take on the job and underwrite the facility, while Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley agreed to syndicate the debt. Bank of America subsequently failed to land a key role in handling Informa's share sale on April 16, which raised £1 billion and was led by Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley as joint global coordinators, the source said. Informa did not respond to a request for comment. A source close to Bank of America said the bank had committed more than $9 billion to European clients for liquidity backup facilities since March the 1st. End of article. Now we're not going to make too much of this at present, other than just to highlight its existence. If US banks are beginning to refrain from supporting Europe and other countries around the world, this could potentially have liquidity issues down the road. At the moment it is just being classed as giving up a small percentage of trade to its competitors. But we have to remember what started the 2008 crisis or certainly proved to be a catalyst within it, was the lack of confidence some banks had on the financial assets, in this case to a large extent mortgage derivatives and packages, held by other banks, and against which they were either lending or borrowing, buying or selling. It's just a mention currently, but worth keeping an eye on. So what do you think? Do share your thoughts with us. And thank you so much for listening. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel and press the bell sign so that you're notified of our videos as and when they're published, not forgetting that we update our Richard and Greg channel every few days. And if you haven't done so, please subscribe to that one too. And finally, a small correction to what we said earlier. The Reuters article wasn't published today, but was in fact published on Friday. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative, and if so, please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at IlluminatiSilver.com and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners.